In the previous part we have seen how to compute concentrated energy losses in case of a sudden enlargement and basically we demonstrated that passing from section A1 to a larger section A2 um, some turbulences occur in this area and these turbulences cause the decrease of the total energy associated with your flow so basically we demonstrated that delta H which is the total head before and after your sudden enlargement is equal to the difference of two velocity to the power of 2 over 2g and uh, reminding that uh, mm, it's valid the continued equation which means that q from this section to this one is constant hence uh, v1a1 is equal to v2a2 then you can in the in the end obtain this factor that is obtained again from uh, um, its uh, v2a2 over a1 which is equal to v1 for the continuity equation and this constant right here is the constant that you usually observe when you compute the concentrated energy losses so finally when you want to compute the concentrated energy losses you have to consider that these kind of losses are related to some variations inside the geometry of your um, pipe so for example if you um, see a sudden enlargement or again we will see if you see a sharp uh, variation inside the, the motion of your flow so let's try right now to see what are other uh, kind of concentrated energy losses uh, which are the most important ones so <clears throat> first kind of concentrated energy losses after of course the sudden enlargement is the head loss at the entrance of the pipe basically right here you have your initial tank and from this tank there's a pipe that is starting from this point so your flow is uh, forced to enter to this pipe it's possible if uh, you have a square headed entrance which means that right here and right there you have a 90 degree angle it's possible to compute the previous k as 0 0.5 so it's basically passing from this situation of energy to this one you have 0 0.5 times v2 with the power of 2 over 2g the same thing is when you have an additional inner tube which is something that is entering your initial tank and again from the geometry and making some experiments it is possible to obtain a k value of 1.16 or usually it's 1 it's adopted the same thing happens when you want to consider the exit of your pipe so for example here is your pipe here is your final tank so it's the ending point of your entire system plant so moving from this part so basically where you have the pipe to this part where you have the tank you have a decrease of the total energy of put to the power of 2 over 2g which means that your k is equal to 1 what happens when you have a convergent which means that you are moving from a larger section to a smaller one basically in this situation if these walls are um, I mean are not so sharp <laughs> basically you have that your losses can be considered as negligible while it's different if you have a divergent which means that you're moving from a smaller section to a larger one and again in this case uh, the, um, 
the losses are related to the difference of the velocity to the power of 2 over 2g times m, where m is a coefficient which is a function of your uh, degree of overture of your walls. If you have inside your pipe some curves, elbows or gate valve, basically you can demonstrate that k is again a function of the geometry, so it depends on the kind of degree of overture or array of curvature that you are considering inside your pipe. Alright, and we will see better with the example in the end how to compute it. Okay, so right now we have considered the, the case of uniform motion, but uh, the same thing can be extended for permanent motion. Permanent motion says that basically you have a Q, a volumetric discharge, which is a constant value and uh, it's independent both from space and time. So basically, permanent flow can be caused by gradually or sharp variations of section or direction, variation of discharge, and finally, the variation of density of your flow. If you want to evaluate the distributed losses in permanent flow, which means again, considering sorry again that your fluid is constant, the density of your fluid is constant, then you should remind that the volumetric discharge again is the average value of the velocity times your cross section area which are again constant. In general you can compute the, uh, your distributed losses exactly as the case of uniform flow because it's almost equal, so J, your hydraulic gradient, which will, it would be equal to minus delta H, so the gradient of your total head over the space, so the motion, the coordinates of, your, of the direction of your flow, and this is equal again to Darcy Weisbach, so again if you consider that your um, pipe is a circular one, you can demonstrate that from this law you obtain exactly right this one. So if you remember exactly a circular pipe is characterized by an hydraulic radius which is equal to g over 4, so r is g over 4. So let's try for a while to compute these things. So, one moment. I hope that it's possible to see it. So you have in general that your distributed losses are given by J which is equal to okay it's minus delta H over dS so it's the gradient of your total heads over the direction of your flow S and these things is equal to lambda v to the power of 2 over 4 the hydraulic radius to g. But again, if you remember that your hydraulic radius for circular pipe is equal to d over 4, and I want to substitute these things right here, I obtain that g is equal to lambda v to the power of 2 over 4 d over 4 to d. You remember this one is exactly our Darcy Weisbach law obtained for a circular pipe. But remember again that v, the velocity, is given by 
the volumetric discharge over the cross section. So this becomes the lambda that multiplies q over a to the power of 2 over 2gd. So again, let's try to compute this. We obtain lambda q to the power of 2 over 2gd and we have also in the denominator a to the power of 2. So a for a circular section we obtain pi g to the power of 2 over 4. Everything to the power of 2. So this stuff right here is our cross-section area. Then again, what can we find? Lambda q to the power of 2 over 2 g d pi to the power of 2 d to the power of 4 and 4 to the power of 2 is 16 so this become 8 lambda q to the power of 2 over g pi g to the power of 5 and so if you observe we have something that once that we have defined our kind of flow which is given by lambda because remember that lambda is the friction factor and the friction factor depends on the nature of your flow so Reynolds number and the relative roughness of your pipe so once that we have defined lambda we can observe that J our hydraulic gradient is so it's 8 lambda over g pi that multiplies q to the power of 2 over g to the power of 5. So basically if you check in some manuals for example you can observe that experimentally this ratio can be given because a g pi are constants, lambda is something depending on the, on the nature of your flow and then these which are called binomial form are something that relates the hydraulic gradient J with your volumetric discharge to the power of 2 and the diameter of your pipe to the power of 5. Another important thing to remember is that when you consider a permanent motion you have to remember that J, so your hydraulic gradient, is not equal to your piezometric gradient. So J, which is again minus delta H over GS, in this case is different from E, which is equal to minus delta little H over GS. Again, remember that H is your total head, so it's Z plus P over gamma plus alpha V to the power of 2 over 2G. Alpha usually is equal to 1 for turbulent flow. Z plus P over gamma is your little h, so it's your piezometric head. All right. Sorry. Uh.